Our Father, we thank you for the conviction you have planted in our hearts that you remain the same. Your power remains the same. Your word remains the same. And that you have given authority to the believer over all the works of the devil. And therefore, Lord, we are praying tonight that you open our eyes of understanding that the word of faith will work in a dynamic way in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray that your changeless, unfailing power will be felt and will be known in our lives even tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'm praying that this very day you'll manifest your power, you'll manifest your glory, and you'll deliver the oppressed tonight here in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. There are two words I want you to focus your attention on in those in that verse I've read to you. The first word is faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. The second word is obey. And then we're told he went out not knowing whither, not knowing where he went. I'm talking to you on the basis of those two words faith and obedience bringing those two things together the obedience of faith you should know that the secret of the victory in Abraham's life was the faith he manifested and the secret of victory in anybody's life will be the faith that that individual will manifest if you have read the life of Abraham he did exploits great things in God's name because of faith and if you have had testimonies in the lives of people the basis of their testimonies is the faith they manifested and yet that faith must be active must be dynamic must be a type of faith that works if faith is passive and inactive then it will not do any work at all and this is what you find in the lives of many, many people. That they have inactive, passive faith that will not operate. Because of that, their prayers are not effectual. Will not bring an answer. We're told in James chapter 2. Look at it. James chapter 2. And in verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also faith without action faith without obedience faith faith without corresponding work that's dead and if your faith is dead it will not produce it's like a man taking seed into the farm and he plants the seed but then the life giving uh, substance in that seed is taken away and because of that after planting there is no fruit and so if your faith does not have the sin that brings life dynamism power and effect that faith will not work faith that is passive faith that is inactive will not get any prayer answered but in the case of abraham we're told by faith when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance he obeyed and yet at that time when he went out he did not know where he was going here is something we need to learn about faith that when god calls or when god speaks on the basis of the spoken word the naked word of god that he speaks to you you act you move and you go in the direction that the word of God is directing you to go and if you act in faith like that then that faith which is obedient to the word of God will produce fruit in your life but if we do not have faith 
the faith that works, the faith that acts. Whatever prayers we pray, that prayer will not be answered because the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Jesus said a lot of things about faith. He said, if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That is, as we are coming to God, what God is looking for is that you believe God. You will stand upon the word of God. And if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. On another occasion, Jesus Christ himself said, that what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Believe that you receive, and then you will have. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and he shall not doubt in his heart. He will not doubt in his heart, but he will believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Before he left, he told his own disciples, he said, He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto the Father. In Mark chapter, chapter 6, and verses 5 and 6, the Bible says about Jesus, and he could not, he could dare do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk, and healed them. And he marveled because of their own belief. The power was there. His glory was there. The ability was there. But because the people were not believing. You see a lot depends upon your faith. A lot depends upon what direction you are looking at. A lot depends upon what your confidence rests upon. You see, even if Jesus came and he prayed for you. If, you, if the prayer does not meet faith in your heart, not much you will get. But here it says, he could not, not that he would not, he wanted to. Not that he didn't like to, he liked to, but he could dare do no mighty work, except that he laid his hands upon a, sick, upon a few sick folk, and he healed them. And he marveled, and he was surprised, because of their unbelief. How do we see unbelief? How do we know unbelief? How do you detect unbelief when you see it? When the Lord is telling you to do something and you don't accept, you don't do it because of the unbelief. Because you say, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I want to do that. I don't think there will be any result out of that thing if I did it. That's unbelief. Disobedience is the evidence of unbelief. And unbelief can kill. Unbelief can bring a great loss in your life. There are people that will be afraid to make restitution in their lives. The Lord is calling them, go this direction, go this way. But no, they won't. You know why? They, they don't believe God. They say, if I do that restitution, I might lose my job. Doesn't God know about your job? Doesn't he care about your job? Doesn't the Bible say, seek ye for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and his righteousness? And then all these things shall be added unto you. There are people that have heard the word of God. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. They know the word of God, but they don't believe. They say, if I do not get myself yoked with that unbeliever, how will I ever get married? But God is thinking about that. But God is planning about that. But no, they do not believe. But you know, in the case of Abraham, by faith, when God called him into a place, which he should after receive for an inheritance. He obeyed. He had not seen what the outcome will be. He had not known what the outcome will be. But by faith, he obeyed. Unbelief will disobey. Unbelief will reject the word of God. Unbelief will neglect the word of God. But when God says, go ahead, a believer will go ahead. When God says, this is the direction to go, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He will say, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do in faith and will obey, and you will take care of the results. 
you know, among the children of Israel, the Lord told them, when they were in the wilderness, He said, go out in the morning and gather manna, the bread that you will eat. And He said, eat everything you gather for a whole day. Don't let it remain over the second day. Because I'll provide for you the following day. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Then he told them, a day previous to the Sabbath day, he said, nobody will go out on the Sabbath day. Take a double measure before the Sabbath day. And then on the Sabbath day, I'll preserve the one remaining so that you'll be able to eat. Do you know that the people that didn't believe, unbelief led them to disobedience. First, all they gathered in one day, instead of eating everything, instead of finishing everything, according to the word of the Lord. No, they will not believe. No, they will not accept. They let it remain. What happened to it? It began to sink. It was spoiled. And God said, Moses, all these people are not believing. Because they are not believing, they are not obeying. Disobedience is the result of unbelief. On the Sabbath day, many of them went out. The unbelievers, and they didn't get anything. And God said again, but didn't I tell you that today is a holy day unto the Lord, and that you worship the Lord even this day, and then the Lord will be taking care of you. You see, it was that unbelief that destroyed the children of Israel. And today, do you know, there are still many people that are, here to, that are not here tonight. You know why? They do not believe God. They are not having confidence in the word of God or in the promises of God. God told the children of Israel, He said, as you do your farming, one year out of seven years, you leave that land, and then on that seventh year, I'll bless you so much, so much, you won't have anything to lose. But he said, you leave the land for one year out of seven years. Do you know that instead of believing God and doing what God told them to do, they will not. Because of their unbelief, they didn't accept, they didn't believe that what God had said, he will surely perform. They kept on walking. They kept on tilling the ground. And for many, many years, the land did not have rest. In fact, that's the reason that God sent them to captivity and said they had cheated, they had disobeyed, they had manifested unbelief for so many years that now for 70 years they had to go to Babylon. You see, it was because they were not believing God. Unbelief will disobey. Those who should have been here tonight, some of them are not here. You know why? Because I announced on Sunday about a reorganization. And I said, I will not be preaching every time every day for that i'm going to give other preachers in our church those preachers i believe the power of god will work through them if you believe that can you say amen uh, they said no if the manna is not going to come on on the sabbath day i don't accept that i'm not going to obey the word of god then i will say at home that's why they are not here tonight when you go back home now and you tell them that the, the, the first question they will ask you they will say who preached is it brother so and so? Is it brother so and so? Then you say, is the man of God that prayed? They say, what? I mean something. They always mean something. They always mean something. Because, you know, they are not believing God. Because if they believe God, they won't be saying, well, if the man of God will not preach, I will not go there. Let me tell you this. Whether I'm preaching or not, if I'm just sitting down, I'm praying for you already. Even my just being here, don't you know, the shadow of Peter healed the people that were sick. He wasn't pre preaching at that time. He wasn't even praying at that time. What if I'm not preaching and I just sit down? And while you are standing up, the Lord reveals a problem to me. And then I pray and say, God, take it away. I believe God will take it away. While I'm sitting down, the Lord says, somebody has a mountain there. And I keep on sitting down and I say, God, remove that mountain. I believe the Lord will remove that mountain. If you believe that, say amen. amen. There are many people that did not come in the morning. And, you know, in the morning, uh, they, they suspected maybe pastor will not preach uh, this morning because reorganization is taking place. I will not allow reorganization to meet me at Bagada. They didn't come. 
and they will be surprised when the people in the morning session went back home and they told them the things that happened they will say ah why did i not go unbelief unbelief in the morning let me tell you god visited us in a mighty way here there was a man that had accident about one and a half years ago and uh, since that time he and his wife had the accident together in the same vehicle he told me last Thursday because he came with his wife last Thursday that when he had that accident that he didn't know himself anymore he was unconscious people even thought that he had died and that it was just a good Samaritan that came over over there and took him to the hospital and his wife and eventually they directed him from UCH, directed him to a Bobby here. And he's been going there. It's been a real sorrowful time. All his money has gone. All his business, everything has gone. And when he came last, uh, last Thursday, in fact, the way he came, it was wonderful. Because he had been my, uh, we are cousins together. We are related, just from the same place. And he, he had never come to deeper life. They have been hearing about me and about what God is doing. You know, unbelief will just smile and say, Ah, that's my cousin, that's my cousin. I was not coming. After the accident, he still didn't come. As he was going about, he got to one Elijah, old Elijah, ex Elijah, and uh, said, I have this problem. That hand, the hand, that time the hand could not move. And so Elijah said, Well, I am no more the way you knew me before. Now I go to deeper life. And then that Elijah mentioned my name. And my cousin said, what? That's my relative. And Elijah introduced him, my relative, to me. And took up the challenge. And he took up the challenge. And he, and he said, I will go. That Elijah prayed for him. Remember, Elijah himself had been converted. Because Elijah had been brought here. And God had done a great work in her life. And eventually, he came here last Thursday with his wife. And it was on crutches. It was a very, very bad case. And I encouraged him to keep coming. And I prayed with him on some various things in his life. And he came here this morning. And I was talking on this same message. The obedience of faith. Now, he said, while the message was going on, he was feeling within him, today is my day. Today is my day. Today is my day. Is today your day? The day of miracle. The day of power. The day of the supernatural in your life. And eventually, while we are praying, the Lord did the work. And he threw away the crutches. And let me tell you that this man, it was a real serious problem. Real serious problem. In fact, all his customers had left because they thought he had died. And things have been difficult because he spoke with me last Thursday. And uh, in the morning after he got healed that way, do you know, I didn't even mention all that problem separately. I just said, blind eyes, if you are there, open. I just said, lame man, if you are there, begin to walk. I just said, anything you have over there, I said, God, touch them right now. I said, the miracle has taken place. That's what I did. I didn't wait mentioning one problem after the other, problem after the other. He just believed immediately. He threw away the crutches. Now, we have been seeing miracles before, but the one of this morning is different. The man walked, and then he wanted to test. He wanted to test whether he had been healed really or not. He went to climb a high place over there, and he jumped down. All the newcomers that were still trying to talk to, telling them that, uh, you know, we meet on Sunday, we meet on Monday, we meet on Thursday. While the drama was taking place, all the newcomers, they stood up, they were looking at the drama. And the man, he, he almost said, uh, the excitement was too much. Sometimes he will prostrate on the ground, sometimes he will stand up, sometimes he will run, sometimes he will walk. Many, many things he started to do. But you know, what if that man, had, when he had me on Sunday, that now we are having reorganization, the pastor will not be preaching every time, he would have missed his miracle if he didn't come. I thank God that you came tonight. I said, I thank God that you came tonight. You will see the glory of God in Jesus' name. Well, I'm happy to tell you that I'm not changing what I said before. Reorganization is going on. 
And those who really believe God, they will keep coming. Those who don't believe God, in any case, even if they came and they were not believing God, they will not get anything. If you really believe God, you will keep coming. And I believe the power of God will work in your life in Jesus' name. Whether I am preaching or not, even if I'm just sitting down, even if I'm just praying quietly, I pray that a miracle will come upon your life. The devil will run away from your life. Now, the people that do not believe God, they miss a lot in their lives. But those who believe God, those who believe God, you will never be ashamed in Jesus' name. You see, there are those who are afraid of moving forward because they do not believe. Unbelief will lead to disobedience, but faith will lead to obedience in the word of God. Let me show you examples. In 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And a creditor is come to take unto him my, my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine heart made as not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad, of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. You see, the woman wanted prosperity, wanted to pay her debts. She had a problem. The husband was dead, but the husband was owing him before, she, before he died. Now the people that had the money, they were coming to hold the two sons of this woman. And so she went to the man of God. Now what do you think the man of God should have done? Pray for her. That's right. But sometimes God will direct another way. And if you are believing God, you will be obedient to the word of the Lord. So the prophet of God said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Now, let me tell you this. There are people that misunderstand the Bible. And they say, oh no, I'll never borrow. That's not the will of God for me. That's not the word of God for me. Oh, they say, I've made a vow. I'll never borrow anything. If I die, I die. And when the word of God comes out, go. Borrow empty vessels, not a few. That word borrow, they don't like it. But this was the word of the Lord. Go, borrow empty vessels, not a few. But the woman, because she had faith, she didn't say, what will I do with empty vessels? That's unreasonable. That's not what I want. That will not pay my debt. That will not help me. But the person that obeys God will be manifesting his faith. And the woman believed God and believed the word of the prophet. And she obeyed in verse 5. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and he, and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed then she came and told the man of God and he said go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. You see, the miracle came here because of obedience. The miracle will always follow faith, but faith will be shown, will be evidenced by your obedience to the word of command or the word of authority from the man of God. You see, sometimes there are people that get their miracles by just listening to one message or two messages. At other times, there are people that have listened to many, many messages. They miss their miracle. Because they will not obey. And if you have faith, you will obey. I traveled out of Lagos some time ago. And as I got to this place, I was preaching the word of God. Friday night and Saturday morning. Only two messages. 
and there was a 14 year old girl she was helpless she was sick she was so weak that she had to be withdrawn away from school she couldn't go to school anymore because of the sickness and they'll carry her to the bathroom they'll carry her to the toilet she couldn't play with other children they'll carry her about and they brought her to the place where i was preaching and that girl had only two messages friday night saturday morning then i prayed for the people and i told them go back home go back home your miracle is following you home that girl 14 years of age she believed it and she went as she went home she was still sick looking sick because faith will not walk by sight faith will not go by feeling eventually she got to her place when they were getting out of the vehicle the people that were carrying her were a little bit careless she fell down when she fell down but remember the, the girl was believing god that that man of god from lagos had said my miracle is following after me i've got my miracle i still feel sick but i've got my miracle i'm still weak but i've got my miracle because the strength of god is made perfect in your weakness and so she got up when she got up the power of god struck her immediately and then she became totally healed and now she became so healed 14 years of age that she developed her faith what i'm telling you is just about three months ago now in all that community the testimonies who are hearing is that when anybody gets sick in that community that girl with only two messages friday night and saturday morning will go there and say as i got healed i can give you healing and we lay hands on them and they get healed they get healed then she'll come back home then they, she hears that somebody is sick again 14 years of age again she'll pray for that person that person will get well on the basis of two messages now she has gone back to school and she's in secondary one and if a secondary one girl can do all that you can do more you will do more it was some time ago i went to ibadan and uh, in that place it wasn't even a deeper life meeting and after preaching to them i told them now you have had the message you are going back home and i'm going back to lagos then i told them that when they got back home if they saw any blind any lame any person that was deaf and dumb they should lay their hands right on that person that very night and i told them if they will obey and do that that very night they'll be all right and a lady who had never prayed for the sick before that was her first time she went and they said i think it was a junior brother of hers living with them was deaf and dumb and she laid hands on her on him and said we have been commanded that we should lay hands on anybody that is sick i've never done this before but now i am obeying because i believe and said you spirit of death of deafness pass out get out in jesus name and you know that person began to hear and began to talk obedience obedience if you believe you will see the glory of god and so this woman believed and she saw the glory of god tonight if you'll act out your faith if you'll obey in faith i believe that you will never be the same again that thing that is making noise in your ear it will vanish away that evil spirit that is following you about it will vanish away all those enemies that are trying to destroy your life you look for them you'll find them no more all those things that are appearing to you in the dream you look for them you will see them no more all that threatening of the devil saying you will die you will die you will tell the devil that's a lie i'm not ready to die yet and god will preserve your life if you will obey the obedience of faith do you remember a man that was a leper and this man came to the prophet of god elisha wanting Elisha to heal him that's in second kings chapter 5 and a man of god sent one of his ushers oh he said I, i've never read that in the bible don't you know that man was like an usher because when the woman wanted to grab the feet of Elisha it was Gehazi that was driving the man the woman away that's the work of an usher to give perfect protection and security to the man of god and so that Gehazi drove them away and then elisha told the usher Gehazi, and said go and tell him 
to go into river Jordan seven times, obey that, you'll be healed. For a moment, the man said, myself, did I come all the way from Syria to go and jump into Jordan? I will not do it. Disobedience is an evidence of unbelief. Some people say, doesn't the pastor know I'm coming from long, long distance? Doesn't he know I'm coming from Ajegunle? Doesn't he know I'm coming from many, many kilometers? Why will he say that we're bringing reorganization and somebody will preach, somebody will not preach, somebody will preach, somebody will preach? We are not going to take that. Reorganization or no reorganization, I don't want River Jordan. That's unbelief. That's unbelief. But you know, eventually they begged him. They said, Master, what if the man of God, the prophet of God, I told you to do a greater thing, will you not have done it? And Elisha was staying at home. And Elisha was praying, Oh Lord, I've given him the word that you have given to me. If he will obey it, let the miracle come upon him. Just like here. I told you, whether I'm preaching or I'm not preaching, I might just be sitting down. But I'll say, Oh Lord, that word of faith, honor it. That word of power, honor it. And whatever you need, God will give it to you in Jesus' name. And eventually I accepted. And he went into River Jordan once, twice, thrice, four times, five times, six times. At the seventh time, the complete miracle took place. At the point of your obedience, your complete miracle will take place. At the time of the obedience of faith, when you say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And in obedience to your word, I'm going to act my faith out. Your miracle will come upon you in Jesus' name. Do you remember that woman that came to the Lord Jesus Christ? And then Jesus will not even answer that woman. And eventually she came and said, Lord, help me. And eventually Jesus said, it is not right to cast children's bread onto dogs. She said, truth, Lord. Even the dogs will eat the crumbs falling from the master's table. And Jesus said, great is your faith. But Jesus did not say, I'll follow you home. I'll touch your child. I'll pray for your child. I'll raise your child up. She he said, great is your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. Go back home. And the woman went back home. The woman did not say, uh, I will not leave today except you follow me home. I will not leave today except you touch my child. I will not leave today or except you give me an handkerchief and I go to wrap it around the neck of my child. I will not leave today until you give me something and then I go to rub it on the child. But Jesus spoke the word. But the woman obeyed. Obedience of faith. Obedience of faith. By the time she got home, the devil had departed from that child. You see, that's what God is looking for. That you'll put action into your faith. Obedience into your faith. And the moment you obey God, you'll find that a miracle will come upon your life in Jesus' name. You remember that Jesus attended the wedding at Cana of Galilee. And the mother came and said, they do not have any wine anymore. And Jesus said, my time is not yet. But the woman knew if a miracle will happen, we'll have to obey. And so the woman went to the servants and said, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Because the miracle will come if you manifest faith through obedience. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And so Jesus said, go and fill the water, uh, the pot with water. We're not looking for water. We need wine. We need the new wine. We need something that is supernatural. Go and fill the pot with water. And so the servants did. And then without any prayer, without any energy, he said, draw it out and go and give the man, the MC, master of ceremony. And they didn't say, he doesn't want water. He wants wine. That would be unreasonable to go and give him a cup of water. But they obeyed. That's faith. That's faith. And then when the man tasted it, it was the best wine that he had ever tasted. But he got it because of faith. He got it because of faith. 
and if you'll believe God tonight and you will obey, I believe that you'll get a miracle in Jesus' name. Let us die. This is another occasion again. And Jesus came there. But you see, whenever you are believing God, you must have to obey something. Obey the word of God. And so Jesus said, take you away the stone. They said, he's thinking, he's dead, and he's been dead four days. And Jesus said, that's what I told you before. Believe. Because if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. And they rolled away the stone. They rolled away the stone. And as they rolled away the stone, it made way for the miracle to come. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. That's how the miracle came. But to see, if they did not obey, they will be unbelieving, unbelieving. But when you believe, when you say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I accept your word. That faith that produces obedience to the word of God, it will bring a miracle in your life. It will bring a miracle in your family. Look at John chapter 4. Obedience of faith. John chapter 4, from verse 46. So Jesus came again unto Cana, into Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For it was at the point of death. He wanted Jesus to come down. You see, we all have our natural desires. We all have what we like, what we want. What he liked, what he wanted was that Jesus will come down before the child will die. But then Jesus, instead of going, at another way. And then in verse 47, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he will come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. In verse 49, he repeated again. The nobleman says unto him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Come down, come quickly, ere the child dies. And Jesus says unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Go thy way, thy son leave it. People that do not believe God, they say, No, I will not go. No, I will not go. No, I will not go here today. I'm going to stay here. Go. Your son is alive. Go. The sickness is removed. Go. The mountain is gone. Go. The devil is under your feet. Go. The trouble is over. Go. Your family is united together. Uh -uh, I will not go. I will not go. I wanted you to come. Don't you love me? Don't you want to help me? Don't you want to pray for me? Don't you want to give me a miracle? Go. Go thy way. Thy son leave it. You see, the Lord wants obedience of faith. And there are people that will say, No, I will not go. No, I will not go. Because if I go, that means that I am a failure. That means that my prayer has not been answered. That means that nothing will be given to me. Obedience of faith. If you believe God, you'll obey. If you believe God, you'll carry out that instruction. And in verse 50, Go, thy son liveth. And a man believed the word of the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. He believed and went. Go, thy son liveth. He believed and he obeyed the commandment of Jesus Christ. He went. Obedience is the evidence of your faith. Obedience is the evidence that you are believing God. When the Bible says pray, oh, you say, no, I cannot pray. Somebody must pray for me. When the Bible says your Father in heaven knows your need and that he will fulfill all your need. Oh, yes, I know that, but I do not trust God that he will answer my prayer alone. I cannot pray. When the Bible says speak to your mountain, and tell the mountain to move away. Oh yes, I know that's in the Bible, but I cannot talk to my mountain. I want somebody else to do it for me. When Jesus said, take away the stone. Oh yes, I can if I try, but I don't want to try because it's thinking already. But don't you remember, if you believe God, you'll see the glory of God. Are you believing God tonight? 
I said, are you believing God tonight? If you believe God, you'll see the miracle power of God upon your life. They are quiet of them. They are when he began to amend. And he said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Instantaneously, at the same time, just at the time that Jesus spoke, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the week Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. The miracle came as a result of the obedience of faith. I told you, if you are believing God, you will obey God. If you are believing God, you will answer the call of God. If you are believing God, you will go in the direction of the promises of God. Once you have prayed and we have rebuked the mountain and we have cast away the devil, you will not be saying, well, I don't know whether I am healed yet or not. I don't know whether the miracle is mine or not. I don't know whether I will get well or not. You believe God. And if you believe God tonight, all things are possible to him that believeth in God. Your mountain will move away. The demons will flee away. The sicknesses will flee away. And you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Remember, if you, if you really believe God, you will obey God. When Jesus told the people, stretch forth your hand, they obeyed, they got their healing. When Jesus told the people, pick up your bed and walk, they obeyed and the miracle came upon them. When Jesus told the blind, open your eyes, they obeyed and the miracles came upon them. And you have heard testimonies in this church. When we have prayed for the barren and we have told them what to do, they obeyed because of the obedience of faith, their miracles came upon them. If you are obeying God today, because of your faith, your faith will work in a dynamic way in your life in Jesus' name. Why not rise up upon your feet? Rise up upon your feet. I want you to look at your life in whichever areas the Lord has been telling you what to do. Tell the Lord, O oh Lord, I will show my faith by the obedience I have towards your word. I will show my faith by the obedience I have towards your word. Believe God tonight, a miracle is on, on the way for you. Believe God tonight, a miracle is on the way for you. Believe God tonight, a miracle is on the way for you. I want you to know and understand tonight that God is about to do a great and mighty thing in your life. But I want you to realize that many times what delays the miracles of people is that they have not been born again. They have not given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. They just want to use Jesus Christ to give them butter and bread and healing and whatever it is. But they do not want to serve the Lord. They do not want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because of that they are delayed. Some of the people are still obeying Satan. They have Satan as their master. And because you have Satan as your master, committing sin, being a slave and a servant of sin and Satan, then you are telling God, do this for me. And God says, no, you cannot be serving Satan and then coming to me for hell. Reject the devil, reject your sin, turn away from your evil, call upon the name of the Lord, and then something miraculous will take place in your life. And so, if you have been in sin, and you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, say, Lord, here am I, here am I. I want to live a life of obedience to the word of God. Your plan for the unequal yoke, break that unequal yoke. Follow the Lord in repentance, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Let him change your life. Let him wash you clean. Let him remove all the evil, all the sin in your life. And you'll never be the same again. Amen. Father, I pray right now for as many as are turning away from their sins. They have known what it means to repent, and they are repented. And now they are taking Jesus as their personal Savior. 
I pray, Lord, that you forgive them and you change their lives in Jesus' name. I pray that the blood that Jesus shed for them in the cross of Calvary will completely cleanse them, completely remove the evil in their lives, and the guilt and the condemnation will depart from them in Jesus' name. Save them, O Lord. Give them assurance that they now belong to you. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered us. For we pray in Jesus' name. The people that have the pile and dysentery and all problems uh, relating with that part of the body. If you raise up your hand right now, the Lord is saying that you'll be totally free. And remember when God says you are free, then you are free. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight I send forth your word of authority. That dysentery, that pile, I command you, leave right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus said, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy and that we shall tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. For those who have been tormented by mummy water spirit, evil spirits, and that is the evil spirit that has been delaying the blessings of God in your life. Every time you are moving forward, that evil spirit will come and appear again to pull you down. And they are telling you to do sacrifice. This is the last time concerning you in particular. We are prayed about that thing. And the person that has that um, something at home that you made, thinking that you are using that thing to drive away the evil spirit, if you obey God and manifest your faith, and you get back home and you take all those charms, all those things that you are using to drive away according to you, all those evil spirits, if you go back home and, and take all those things and throw them away, you will never smell any of those parts of evil spirit again in your life. So I'm praying for those people right now. You've been troubled and tormented by evil powers, evil spirits. And that person in particular that has been having that thing at home, you're going to drive, you're going to take all those things and throw them away. You'll receive a miracle in your life this very night. I want those people to just raise up their hands and receive your miracle now. Father, in the name of Jesus. As that person I spoke about will go back home and remove all those chants and throw everything away. I pray that instantaneously this very night, the miracle will come upon that person in Jesus' name. All these who have been tormented by Mami Water Spirit and their families are not experiencing peace because of the uh, maneuvering up and down, the activities of those evil spirits right now i set them free that spirit of fear and that individual i break you i destroy you god in jesus name and i pray that all these people the blood of jesus will be sprinkled upon them by faith and the blood will destroy all the parts of the enemy in their lives in jesus name thank you father because i know you have answered in jesus name i pray the person that has a near, that thing is swollen underneath um, underneath you. And it's a very, very terrible thing. If you just raise up your hand, I'm coming to pray for you now. There's a man over there that in the private part of your body, there's so much swelling that you cannot um, put on normal pair of trousers. That you have to dress in a special way because of the swelling in the private area of your body a man if you raise up your hand you are the one i'm looking for now the one i've been near 
with that thing swelling and uh, swollen underneath in your stomach uh, underneath your abdomen raise up your hand but the other man that the private part is swollen I don't want to go into details and mention things but you should know yourself wherever you are just raise up your hand I'm praying for you now will the man just uh, wave the hand at me wherever you are and if you are where there is no light and the ushers can uh, see you there Will the ushers, um, where there's no light, will they tell me if uh, my man is there? Amen. Just keep your hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, your people are going to obey you. They believe you to the point that their faith will work, their faith will act. And therefore, all that swelling, I command you, Get out right now in Jesus' name. That and near, I command you, get out in Jesus' name. And the swollen part of the private part of that man, I'm asking right now, everything will come to normal in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. The person that, uh, that appears as if they put a heavy, heavy load upon your head. And you feel it in your neck. It appears the heavy load is there. You've been carrying it about for a long time. You just raise up your hand now, you get your miracle. It appears there's a heavy load they put on your head. The work of evil people. That thing is removed already. You can put down your hand. The person that is brought in here that has uh, insanity, not a uh, balance, having mental problem. The fellow that brought him here, I'm waiting for you now to just raise up your hand. You brought somebody that has terrible, terrible um, insanity. Sometimes it may appear normal, but sometimes they'll just fade away and sometimes they become violent. Sometimes things are very, very difficult. And you are even afraid to leave, to stay in the same house because when nothing comes upon him, he can destroy anyone, anything, anybody. You brought that person, you can raise up your hand and wait him for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command right now, you evil spirit, you cannot remain there. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that you manifest your power right now. Set that man free set that woman free in the mind in the head in everywhere set him free in jesus name i pray that that evil spirit i command you you will not come back into that person's mind that person's not that first spirit anymore oh lord deliver that individual by your mighty power right now in jesus name thank you father because i know you have done it in jesus name i pray Whatever other problem, you just uh, lay your hand upon yourself. It will be unto you according to your faith. Wipe away the tears. Take away the bad thoughts you have been having. And don't say, well, I don't think I'll ever get anything. Take away that thought and believe God. Today is your own day. The day of good tidings. The day of the fulfillment of the promise of God the day of the manifestation of God's power. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are never failing God. An unchanging God. Your power will never fail. I come to you on behalf of my brothers and sisters right now. And Lord, I'm praying that barrenness over there, it will get out and that family will have children in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying for that person that the, the people of the world have said they will never make progress. As he builds, then they pull down. As he runs, they drag him back. Every, try, every time he tries to do something, they pull him down. You devil, I command you, remove your hand from that family in Jesus' name. All those evil pass from the village. All those evil pass from the town. All those harassing spirits. To 
tormenting spirit that will bring that man down every time he tries to climb up. I command you, get out of that place in Jesus' name. That family that the devil is trying to break, right now I command you spirit of confusion. Leave that family in Jesus' name. I pray for that person, oh Lord, that has been going up and down. And even this year you've made a lot of sacrifices. Wanting children. And the Lord is telling you that you should come back home and rest. And stop from all your labor. And stop from all the going up and down. And drive away the tears. Because the Lord has seen what you desire. And before a long time, the hand of the Lord is upon you already. And the pregnancy that you are looking for, it's come already. So don't worry about anything now because God has supplied your need. Oh Lord, I pray for that person that has the pain on the right hand side of the head. I command that pain in the area of the ear. Get out in Jesus' name. That's Tamara over there. The Lord is touching your tongue right now. That's Tamarin, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for that person that has that sore and the sore has refused to heal. I pray right now that the healing virtues of the Lord will pass through that sore and the sore will be healed instantaneously in Jesus' name. That fellow that is having the tuberculosis over there, you are coughing blood out. I stop that thing right now. And I command that that uh, coughing of blood will stop your life in Jesus' name. I pray for that adult that is watching in the bed at night. Oh Lord, that thing will stop. That thing will stop. And you will become normal in Jesus' name. That woman over there that has been trying to get married for a long, long time. You try this one, it will not work. You try another one, it will not work. You try another one, it will not work. Until you are thinking, maybe you will just live your life like a free woman. But the Lord says no, that he has just answered your prayer. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you will settle that woman right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I pray that your mighty power will follow the people back home. That person that is having a pain at the back of your head, I knock out that pain right now in Jesus' name. You pain, vanish away. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I pray that all these people that are here today, that man having the high blood pressure, I'm, I'm praying right now. That you remove the high blood pressure in Jesus' name. The person that has been suffering from malaria fever for a long time and you are down and up and down and up. The Lord says right now you are well. Lord, I pray that all these people that are here today, as they take steps of faith, Lord, I pray you heal them and deliver them completely in Jesus' name. Lord, may they never be the same anymore. Change their families. Change their places of work. Provide for all their needs. That, Lord, they will know you have taken all their problems away. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The hand of the Lord is upon you already. Believe the Lord, act in your faith, and do what you were not able to do before, because the hand of the Lord is upon you. Just praise the Lord because of what he has done.